The NRL landscape moves quickly. Our opinions and thoughts change week to week as new stars continue to be introduced and more headlines are created. It can be difficult to remember the results of the last round, let alone the happenings of the NRL a decade ago. In this video, I'm going to be looking at where your NRL club was 10 years ago. Some of the findings are surprising with the rises and downfalls of clubs in the last decade stark. First up, the Penrith Panthers. The Penrith Panthers were a shell of what they had become in 2021. 10 years ago, they were struggling, concluding the 2011 season with one win in their last eight games, finishing in 12th spot. Coach Matthew Elliott would be fired mid-season with a year a proper shambles for the Western Sydney club. Their top point scorer and their best player was Michael Gordon, who led the side with 66 points, even after only playing half a season. Guys like Lachlan Coote and Trent Waterhouse played supporting roles, but overall it was an immense struggle. Little did the Panthers know that a decade later, they would be one of the leading sides in the competition. Next up, it's the Melbourne Storm. There's nothing more certain in this world than death, taxes, and a dominant Melbourne Storm side. The Storm would lead the league for 13 of the 26 rounds, finishing the season as minor premiers. It was the big three of Cam Smith, Billy Slater and Cooper Cronk terrorising opponents' defences, with Billy Slater winning the Dalian medal. It was one of the greatest individual seasons by a fullback. Melbourne would fall short though, as they were shocked in the preliminary final, a disappointing end to their season. Ten years on, they can comfortably say that they made up for their 2011 shortcomings, as they would lift the Proven Summons Trophy in 2020. Now having a look at the South Sydney Rabbitohs, the Bunnies were meant to be the new and upcoming team in 2011. Signing Greg Inglis and led by Big Dave Taylor and Sam Burgess, they were considered contenders. Injuries and one of the poorest defences in the competition cost them a finals berth, with this poor play something Rabbitohs fans were getting used to. Nathan Merritt was the NRL's leader in tries scored, and the memorable Chris Sandow led the team in points and had a whopping 7 field goals in one season. Bunnies fans are far removed though from those years of missing the top 8 as they are now finals regulars. Now let's look at the North Queensland Cowboys. The Cowboys finished just inside the top 8 in the 7th spot as both Matty Bowen and Jonathan Thurston combined to offer one of the more lethal attacks with 18 tries between them. Many forget the Cowboys struggles from 2008 to 10, not making any finals so the 2011 season was a welcome success. Tarek Sims, Leeson Armel and James Tamo all featured in the 2011 season and are still relevant first graders a decade later. Unfortunately for Cowboys fans, both Bowen and JT have hung up the boots in the past decade, with the Cowboys currently in a rebuilding phase. Now for the Parramatta Eels. Taking a look back 10 years, it's without a doubt the Eels have drastically improved their club. Finishing in 14th spot, only a win above the bottom, the Eels had one of the stranger NRL seasons. The Eels would lose over half their matches by 4 points or less, and be defeated 3 times in Golden Point. Outside of Hein Marsh, who was the NRL's leading tackler, the Eels were woeful. Hain was shifted into 5-8 because of the Eels' stagnant attack, and suffered one of his worst statistical seasons. The club handed out plenty of lifeline contracts to veterans and paid the price, with this contrasting drastically to their current recruiting system. The Eels have rebuilt well over the decade, and are now consistently in the finals. Now for the Brisbane Broncos. One of the more star-studded sides of the 2011 season, finishing in third spot, we have seen a downwards trajectory over the past decade. Darren Lockyer was the club's best, with Jarrell Yao Yi and Sam Thide other stars in the side. This was Lockyer's final year in the NRL, which he ended in a legendary way, slotting a field goal to beat the Dragons in the semi-finals. He would do this while having a fractured cheekbone and unfortunately would miss the preliminary final the following week where Brisbane would be outmatched. The Broncos were full of youngsters, with quality guys like Dane Gagai, Gerard Bill, Alex Glenn, Dynamis Louie, Andrew McCulloch, Dale Copley, Corey Norman and Josh Maguire all still active in the NRL. The 2011 Broncos side has the most active players of any club currently, and I'm sure considering their current struggles would love to keep a few of those blokes in the 2021 side. The Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs the Bulldogs of a decade ago were not short on talented individuals as Benny Barber, Aidan Tolman and the ever-present Andrew Ryan led the side. Finishing ninth, Barber would have his breakout year tied with Nathan Merritt as the NRL's top try scorer. It seems like an eternity since we saw Barber play will become the following season's competition's best player, winning the Dallium Award. Things have gone downhill for both the club and Barber outside of that one grand final appearance in 2012. They are now the NRL's bottom dwellers in full rebuild mode. I'm sure Bulldogs fans would take a 9th place finish in a heartbeat if you offered them it now. The St. George Illawarra Dragons 
Coached by the great Wayne Bennett, the Dragons were looking to back up their heroic 2010 Premiership win. Unfortunately, they fell short in the semi-finals after completing the regular season in 5th place. Mark Gazanier, Jamie Sound and Ben Hornby were the team's household names and great club servants. Soud led the team in points with Matt Cooper, the club's top try scorer, with the current active NRL players for that Dragons side, Jack DeBellin and Mitch Rain. Supercoach Wayne Bennett moved on that season and coached three different clubs over the past decade. The Gold Coast Titans. Finishing the season with the wooden splash try from that season was at least something memorable, and it does look like the Titans of today are in a much better situation than the Titans of 2011. The West Tigers. The Tigers have the most tragic decade downfall in this video. A club that was flying high in 2011 with a 9 game win streak finishing the season in 4th spot would bow out in the qualifying final in a major upset. It was disappointing at the time but with the hindsight of the following 10 years, Tigers fans I think would settle with a 4 game win streak and 8th place finish because things have been so dire. Benji Marshall was at the peak of his powers in 2011 and led the competition in points, whilst both Robbie Farr and Keith Galloway would feature for the New South Wales Blues. Gareth Ellis was also considered one of the game's best back rowers at the time, and even with this early finals exit, many thought that this team would continue to build over the following seasons. The Tigers would actually capitulate over the next decade, not featuring the top eight again, and losing all of the talented players to either retirement or to other clubs. I think out of all the clubs, the Tigers' past decade has by far been the saddest. The Sydney Roosters. A far cry from the dominant back-to-back -back winning Roosters sides of the present time, the 2011 team floundered outside the top eight in the 11th spot. The side was only a year removed from being grand finalist, so there were high hopes. Captained by Braith and Nasta, the Chooks had five straight losses to start 2011. The Roosters would never recover, even with the help of Anthony Minicello, who was having a career renaissance and Joey Leilua, who was the club's top try scorer. Todd Carney, coming off a Dally M in 2010, would be charged three separate times during the 2011 season for alcohol fueled incidents and eventually released from his contract. The 2011 season was also the debut year for club great Boyd Cordner, a key to the Roosters' three premierships between the decade. The Roosters should be proud of their transformation from a side that was inconsistent and had off-field drama to one of the more successful and professional clubs in the NRL. The Manly Warringah Sea Eagles. The 2011 Manly side were truly the benchmark, full of household names. Like look at this roster list. Some of the greats of the early 2010s, Jamie Lyon, Steve Maddai, Brent Kite and the Stewart brothers bled the club's colours and were the heart of this great team. Manly with the help of Brett Stewart's team leading 19 tries would have the best attack in the NRL. They also ranked second in points conceded and were with the Manly Storm miles ahead of the rest of the pack. Des Hadler would coach the side to a comfortable grand final win, with it being one of the more dominant premiership seasons the NRL has ever seen. A decade later, and although a lot has changed in terms of success, some things still remain the same. Manly has managed to find two more incredibly talented brothers in the Travoyevichs. Their coach Des Hasler is still at Manly, albeit in a very roundabout way, and Harv's partners Daly Cherry Evans and Kieran Foran still lead the side late into their careers. The Cronulla Sharks. The Sharks, much like the present, were a very middle-of-the-road team 10 years ago. With the star power of prop Paul Gallen and young gun Chad Townsend, they kept themselves afloat in and around the top eight at mid-season. Their second half of the year was very poor though, losing seven on the trot, with the loss of starting playmaker Albert Kelly another factor to their poor play. 2011 blooded the young star Tyson Frizzell with a couple of appearances here and there before he moved on to the neighbourhood rival of the St George Dragons. Wade Graham was still an ever-present building his craft in the second row where he remains today for the Sharks. Finishing the year in 13th place highlighted how average the Sharks season was. The Newcastle Knights The 8th place finish was a bright spot for the Novocastrians as over the past decade the club has seen some incredibly tough times. The play of club legend Kurt Gidley, the Canberra Raiders. In what may be surprising to some, considering the Raiders' recent success, Canberra were perennial strugglers in the early 2010s. The majority of the key players during that season were injured, with Terry Campisi out for the year and Josh Dugan rarely featuring. Sean Fenson was the club's best player with Canberra's fans also getting a glimpse of Josh Papali'i, who debuted in 2011. The Raiders finished in 15th spot in the NRL, and even with some success throughout the decade with a grand final appearance, they are currently in a similar situation 
near the bottom of the table. The New Zealand Warriors. The achievements of the Warriors of the 2011 season are some that Warriors fans would remember with much fondness. Finishing in 6th place behind the star power of both Sean Johnson and James Maloney, the Warriors would go on to a fairy tale finals run. The consistent contributions of Simon Mannering and Kevin Locke propelled the club to its second ever grand final appearance where the team fell short to Manly. This was the season where Ivan Cleary announced himself to the NRL as an excellent coach. Ten years later, the Warriors are doing okay, but haven't been near a grand final in the past decade. So that ends this video looking at where your NRL club was ten years ago. If you have any else, you're notified when the next video comes out. Also, I just wanted to announce that I'm going to be releasing these videos in a podcast format, so you can listen to these videos on the way to work or school. For more updates on the channel, don't forget to follow at underscore AlphaKai on Instagram. As always, thank you for watching.